The purpose for the addition of the 40-25 second play clock is to create a consistent pace of play for MHSAA football contest and not rely on the subjectivity of the referee officiating the game. Play clock administration can be kept either from the press box or on the field, and if kept by the crew, a visible play clock is not required. The key component of the new system is that a 40-second play clock will begin immediately following the conclusion of the previous play, except for a few exceptions when the play clock will be set and started at 25 seconds. This video is being produced to provide officials and schools a better understanding of the MHSAA's expectations in administration and enforcement of the new play clock rules. In general, coaches and their teams should assume that a clock has started one to two seconds from when they see the play come to its conclusion. There are a number of signals from the officials on the field that will indicate the end of the play and the start of the 40 second play clock. Signals that indicate the end of the play include an incomplete pass signal, the stop the clock signal, a single arm extended to mark the forward progress of a runner, and the wind the clock signal to indicate that a runner has remained in bounds near the sideline. Because the play clock will begin immediately following the end of the play, there's no longer any need for the referee to signal ready for play when using the 40 second play clock. For the purpose of penalty enforcement, Ready for play will begin the moment the umpire spots the ball on the field and steps away. To demonstrate proper play clock administration, let's take a look at this series following a kickoff after a score. Following a score, the team in white will be under a 25 second play clock for their free kick. Here are the exceptions for when a 25 second play clock will replace the standard 40 seconds and will be started on the referee's ready for play signal and whistle. The start of a new period. After a score by either team. At the conclusion of a timeout. Following a measurement. Following any legal kick. If team B is awarded a first down. After a stoppage for a foul administration or penalty enforcement. If an inadvertent whistle occurs. Or any other administrative stoppage. So let's get back to the action. Regardless of which team ends up with possession following the free kick, the 25 second clock exception will be used. When the new ball is spotted and the crew is ready, the referee will whistle and signal ready for play. On this play, the receiver makes the catch and is downed inbound short of the line to gain. The covering official will signal the progress of the runner and end of the play by extending his arm into the air. This signals to the play clock operator or the back judge to begin the 40 second play clock. There is no requirement for the officials to allow the defense to match up against the offense's formation or personnel. And the umpire is in control of when the ball is ready for play. When the crew is ready, the umpire should place the ball down and step away. On this second down play, a defensive player is called for a face mask and the end of the play is indicated by the covering official using the stop the clock signal. Because a stoppage occurred due to a penalty enforcement, the next play will be run using the 25 second play clock. After the enforcement of the penalty, the umpire will spot and remain over the ball until the referee whistles and signals ready for play. On this first play with a new set of downs, the runner is brought down inbounds after he has reached the line of gain. The covering official uses the stop the clock signal so that the game clock will be stopped to reset the chains. This marks the end of the play, and even though the game clock is stopped, the 40 second play clock begins immediately. The officials do not need to wait for the chains to move before spotting the ball. In this situation, the game clock will need to be restarted by the referee and he will do so by using the signal for a silent wind when the umpire spots the ball and steps away. This should be a coordinated effort between the umpire and referee. As the play clock reaches 10 seconds remaining, the back judge should, just as under the previous system, extend his arm in the air and then begin a visual countdown of the last five seconds. 
Once again, the end of the play is indicated by the covering official using his stop the clock signal in order to have the chains reset when the runner reaches the line to gain. When the clock operator or back judge sees this, they will immediately start the 40 second play clock. This next pass play will result in an incomplete pass. The covering deep wing official signals the incomplete pass, another indication to the clock operator or back judge that the play has ended and to start the play clock. Notice that the deep wing official has to take a brief moment to retrieve the ball and also to keep his eyes on the players returning back to the line of scrimmage. This slight delay is not a reason to reset the play clock. We will later discuss the instances and procedures when this occurs. On this next play, the runner is brought down near the line of scrimmage. Notice the covering official signaling the progress of the runner with an extended arm. This starts the 40 second play clock immediately. This play demonstrates the purpose for the implementation of the 40 second play clock. Because this play was run under last year's rule of the 25 second play clock, determined by the official's ready for play signal, the play clock had not yet expired by the time the ball was snapped. As indicated by the play clock in the upper left hand corner, this would be a foul for delay of game under this year's rule change. Regardless of the results of this fourth down play, the game clock will be stopped. However, the play clock will be set to 40 seconds if the team in blue gains a first down. Otherwise, the play clock will reset to 25 seconds. The quarterback makes a pass to the back of the end zone that is ruled a touchdown. The play clock will be set to 25 seconds and started on the referee's ready for play signal and whistle. A foul before the snap stops the play clock. Following the enforcement of the penalty, the play clock will be reset to 25 seconds and start again on the referees ready for play. Under this system, there are a couple of instances when the referee may need to reset the play clock. One of these is if the official believes that there is an extended delay at no fault of the offense that prevented the ball from being spotted before the play clock had reached 25 seconds. In this case, he would give a couple of quick tweets on his whistle and signal to the press box with one arm extended and the palm open in an upward pumping action to reset the play clock to 25 seconds. If the 40 second play clock begins running before the end of the previous play, the referee should, likewise, tweet his whistle and then signal to the press box with both arms extended and open palms in an upward pumping action. This indicates that the play clock should be reset to 40 seconds. In both circumstances, the game clock does not need to be stopped to reset the play clock. Thank you for taking the time to review this video on the 40 25 second play clock. I hope that it was informative and will assist you in understanding the reasoning and mechanics of this rule.